Okay, we've got a build video today, but there are definitely going to be a few things in here that I haven't really ever discussed in a video before. So something a little new, something a little different. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm AJ and I am here in the Elite Fit Golf Build Shop. And what we're going to be doing today is something a little bit different because what I'm actually going to be putting together today is a set of irons, but instead of a standard set of irons, we're going to be putting together a half set. That being, well, it's half a set. Instead of a four through gap wedge or a three through pitching wedge, we're going to just have four clubs instead of eight, sort of slimming everything down, making things maybe a little bit simpler. And I think for a lot of golfers, something that if you haven't thought of before, if you haven't considered before, can be a pretty good option. So we're gonna be putting together four clubs, a four, a six, an eight, and a wedge. And secondly, the thing that we haven't really ever talked about, I realize after I've gone through a lot of my old videos, is I don't think I've ever done a set of parallel tip shafts in a build before. Pretty much everything I do is almost always tapered tip constant weight shafts, but in this video we're going to be using some Fujikura graphite shafts that come as parallel 370 tip. So since I haven't ever done any of these on camera for you guys, I figured, well, probably we should do that just to give you an idea what that process looks like, how it's different when you're dealing with 370 tip versus 355 taper tip. Okay, two quick things before we get started. First off, this uh, build, this, these clubs are going to be part of a two video uh, set. Part one is going to be done right here with me doing the build. But part two, I'm actually going to do a gapping session with these irons. That being, I'm going to take them and see how far, what kind of numbers I'm getting off of these irons and see how balanced they are. And that I'm going to actually put over on Elite Fit Golf. So if you haven't, already subscribed to that channel, go ahead, make sure you're subscribed to Elite Fit Golf. Make sure you're also subscribed to this channel, but definitely subscribe to Elite Fit Golf so you'll be able to see the entire set, both the build and then sort of the results, what I get out of them and any sort of adjustments that we end up doing to them over on Elite Fit Golf. Okay, last thing I wanna mention, I've had people asking me about this for a while and so it's something I've been thinking about. It's definitely part of why I wanted to open Elite Fit Golf. But if you are interested in getting more hands-on, getting your hands dirty, let's say, with golf club building, golf club repair. I am about to start golf club building seminars. So I'm gonna be offering two different classes, both a beginner and an advanced class, where you can come in person and basically learn club building or tips and tricks and improve your club building with me here at Elite Fit Golf. So if you are able, or you are close by the Atlanta area and you are interested in getting more information, definitely get in contact with me. You can go to Elite Fit Golf, contact me through there, or you can email me down at this address right here and I can get you more information as far as uh, schedule, costs, what exactly is gonna be covered, uh, sort of all the details. All right, so what are we building today? We've got some Tacoma 101 T iron heads. Again, this is four, six, eight, and pitching wedge. We've got Fujikura Pro 95 gram graphite shafts. Again, these are parallel tip and we will come back to that in a minute. We've got some BBNF black and white ferrules and we've got some gray Pure Pro grips. Definitely have a little bit of a Stormtrooper vibe going here. I think these are gonna look really good when it's all said and done. So excited to get going. So let's start. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is just clean out all the heads. Definitely with a graphite shaft, we just wanna run the drill through there real quick. Just make sure there's no burrs sticking out or anything like that since we're gonna have these graphite shafts. So we're just gonna run these real quick. And then after that, we're gonna get our acetone, clean out the hosels because again, these are brand new heads. They have never had a shaft in them. So just in case there's any sort of old machining oil, something like that, we wanna get that out and make sure we get a good clean bond. Okay, next up we're gonna talk about the shafts. Again, 0.370 parallel tip. We haven't covered this before. What's the difference between 0.355 taper tip and 0.370 parallel? 
Well, right here, this is an exaggerated example of what they would look like if you sort of zoomed way in on them. Right there, tapered. Right there, parallel tip. Taper tip tapers in as it gets closer to the tip. Parallel runs parallel over a certain amount of the shaft. Now what that means is when we are putting in taper tip shafts, we're never going to be cutting from the tip side of the shaft because that shaft with that taper on it, if we start trying to cut things, we lose the taper. So if you're reshafting a seven iron, you need to get a seven iron shaft with that tapered end on it. That's just how it works. So you buy a specific shaft for each head. When it comes to parallel shafts, again, this area, usually about five, six inches long, is all parallel section. So whether you measure it here, here, or here, it's the same. What that allows you to do is take one shaft, and whether you're putting it in a four iron or a pitching wedge, you use the same shaft, you just tip trim it different amounts to adjust the stiffness and how it plays for that particular iron. So the shorter the iron, the more loft it has, the heavier the head gets, the more we want to tip trim, the more of this area we want to cut off to have the shaft play correctly. Now, after we've done that, we still have to cut from this end. We still have to cut from the butt end to get the length, but we cut from the tip to get the flex right, to get it to play correctly. We cut it from the butt end to get it to the final length. So for us today, because I'm going to be making a four, a six, an eight, and a wedge, all four of these shafts I'm using are exactly the same. And actually, I've measured them all too, and they are all exactly 100 grams. So great quality control there from Fujikura. So at this point, we're just going to be now taking each of these shafts, and instead of having them just be blank raw shafts, we are going to tip trim them so they are specifically fit, specifically flexing for each of these irons we're going to be installing them into. So for the four iron, we're going to be tip trimming it one inch, the six, two inches, the eight, three inches, and the pitching wedge, four inches. Okay, we're marked off here for each of the four different irons these are going to go into. Also, by the way, not every shaft is going to have the same tip trimming uh, specs. So with this particular shaft, it said the four iron will be one inch, the six iron is two, and went in half inch intervals basically from iron to iron. Not every shaft is going to be like that. You want to check the manufacturer's recommendations because some of them may be slightly different. Some of them may be quite a bit different. Basic rule is though, the stiffer you want it, the more you cut off it. So you can play around with it a little. If you want to make it a little stiffer, you would trim a little more. If you want to make it a little softer, you would trim it a little less. Okay, now we're gonna measure each of these clubs for length. Remember, we have now tip cut these, so each of these shafts has a specific head that it has to go with, so make sure you don't get them confused. I'm gonna be making these final length of uh, 38 and three quarters on this four iron. Okay, last thing to do, we're gonna check the swing weight, see how they all progress. In this set, the way I've got it here, I am 
kind of thinking I wouldn't mind having a little bit more of a slope with my swing weight where the four iron is a little bit lighter uh, and each club maybe gets a little bit heavier going into the wedge. We'll see what it looks like with their raw setup before we change anything and then decide what we want to do. We're going to go ahead and put our grip rubber banded onto the back. So this four iron is basically at about D0.5. Again, without the epoxy, without the ferrule on it, it'll get about a point heavier when we build it. So figure it's probably right around D1, give or take. Again, remember these heads, we aren't gluing them on yet, so don't go tipping the shaft over like this because the head will just fall off and bang on the ground. Okay, this one's about a point heavier, so call it about D, D one and a half, but again, once we put epoxy, ferrule, D two and a half. Okay, the eight iron's about a half a point light, so it's weighing out at D one right now. So ideally, we wanna add about, call it about four grams in order to get this up a little bit more, get it a little heavier than that six iron. So we're gonna add four grams to this guy, yeah, the wedge is about D, just under D5 right now, so definitely is gonna be a little heavier, so, and I'm okay with that. Again, I'm looking for that sort of progression. So the only one we're gonna to have to adjust is we're gonna put about four grams of weight into the eight iron, just so we have a nice, smooth swing weight progression. Now this is the four gram tip weight. And again, when we're dealing with graphite shafts, unlike steel, because this vent hole is so small, there isn't a lot of room in there. So you end up with these thicker heads to get the weight you're looking for. This one's still not that big, they come bigger. But because of that, unlike a steel shaft where it just fits flush with the tip, this sticks out a little further. So if we just install this just like this and only have it in this shaft, this shaft is gonna play a little softer because it's not inserted as fully into the golf club head because of that tip. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut this amount of material off of the tip of this shaft so that one, it'll play the right length without any further adjustment, and two, it'll play the right flex without being softer because of this extra tip area. Okay, let's start putting them together. The hardest part at this point, honestly, is going to be the fact that these ferrules are a little bit snug on these 370 shafts. So I've sanded out the inside just a little bit, but I'm also gonna heat them up with my heat gun just a little bit, soften them up a little bit to help get them onto the shaft as we're uh, putting everything together, getting the epoxy on. Just a little low heat, just to soften it up, just a touch. Be careful, it's still hot. Okay, get this guy started on.
Just tap it down. You can hear it as it settles, so that's as far as we have to go. Now we'll just get our logos. Let's see, I guess the logos are more or less the same on both sides here, but we'll go with this side that doesn't show the weight or the flex. Also, just remember, don't over install the ferrule on this shaft because it's going to have that extra tip weight on there. So you don't want the ferrule to be too far up. A little further. Tip weight in. Tap it down. If you want to see what these clubs look like, what the finished clubs look like, and see how they perform in my gapping session, see what I'm getting out of these irons and seeing if I have to make any adjustments, head on over to Elite Fit Golf. I'm going to have the follow-up, the second part of this video over there. So head on over. I'll see you there in a minute. Thanks for watching this video. Take care.